In this video, I'm going to be talking about perfect passive participles, how to recognise them, how to form them, and how to translate them into English. Because we're having a look at participles, you really need to know your noun endings. Now, if you can't remember those at all, if you're struggling with them, go and download my free noun endings reference guide from the link in the description below. It'll really help you out just to have it to hand. So what is a participle? Well, to really break it down, it's what's called a verbal adjective. That sounds really confusing, but it basically forms two parts. It's formed from a verb, so it's called verbal, and it declines like an adjective. Now, what do I mean by both of those things? Well, it has a tense, like a verb, but it also has a number, gender, and case, like an adjective. There's quite a few types of participle. There's the present active participle, so carrying. There's the perfect passive participle, having been carried. There's the future active participle, about to carry, and there's the perfect active participle, which is really only for deponent verbs, which is having spoken. Last video was about present active participles, so if you want to have a look at that, go and check it out on my channel. This video is about the perfect passive participle, having been carried. That's how we're going to translate them. So perfect passive participles, here's what you need to know. They're formed from the fourth principle part. What I mean by that is when you open your dictionary and you find a verb, you usually get four different parts. The first one is your first person singular, like I carry. The second one is your infinitive, to carry. The third one is the perfect tense, like pour ta V. That one is your perfect stem. And then you have your fourth principal part, which is your perfect passive participle. It matches the noun that it's describing in case, number, and gender. Remember how we talked about how it was like an adjective? This is why. It declines like a 212 adjective. We'll have a look at the endings, so don't worry. But if you can't remember what a 212 adjective is, go and check out my channel for the video on that. It has masculine, feminine, and neuter endings. So it has us, a, um, and all the tables that go with those. A perfect passive participle describes an action that's already in the past by the time the main verb comes along. I'll get more into how to translate those, but just have that in mind. The action that the, is the participle has already happened by the time the main part of the sentence comes along. So, here are my four principal parts of my verb to carry. Porto, portare, portawi, portatus. The fourth one is the one I'm interested in today. The perfect passive participle. Now, because our dictionaries don't go on forever, and thank goodness they don't, because we wouldn't be able to carry them around if they did, we only get given the singular masculine nominative version of our perfect passive participle. However, there are many, many endings that it can have. But don't stress out. Remember how I said they go like two one two adjectives? Well, this is how that works. Effectively, if I want to change my case, number, or gender, I take the US off my portatus, and I add on any of these endings, if they are singular, so my second declension masculine endings are my masculine endings, my first declension endings are my feminine endings, and my second declension neuter endings go for my neuter endings here. So if I'm describing the woman carrying the books, and she's nominative, I use a. If she's accusative, I use am. If it's to the woman carrying the books, I would use ae, because that's my dative ending, and she would be dative. If I want to talk about more than one personal thing, I need my plural endings. So again, I just use my two one two endings, my second declension endings, my first declension endings, and my second declension endings. Don't worry if you can't remember all of these, you can go and download the reference guide from the link in the description. This has all of those written out for you to keep to hand. Let's have a look at a sentence with a perfect passive participle. We're going to start nice and easy, going to start masculine nominative singular. I've got servus wakatus timibat. Now I know straight away that servus is nominative. He's in charge of my sentence, the slave. I then go to the end, timebat, was fearing or was afraid. So the slave was afraid. Then I get a little bit more information about the slave. That's all that a participle really does. It gives you more information about the noun it's describing, just like an adjective does. In this case, it's just formed from a verb, so it has slightly more information attributed to it. In this case, wakatus. Now, literally, this could be translated as the having been called slave was afraid. That is perfectly fine. That would get you full marks. However, it's a bit clunky. So what I'm going to say is having been called, the slave was afraid. I could change this to after he had been called or when he had been called, but I like to keep the passive sense. So having been called, the slave was afraid. 
This is a more fluent translation, but the one above would work just as well. Now, something important to remember when you're doing participles is something called the sequence of tenses. Remember how I said that the main verb really dictates how to translate the participle, which tense to translate it in? Well, this is how this works. I have three categories of main verb. I have pluperfect, perfect, and imperfect. They're my past tenses. Then I have my present, that's present tense. And then I have my future and future perfect. They're my future tenses. Those three distinct categories dictate how to translate the perfect passive participle. So if my main verb is one of my past tenses, pluperfect, perfect, or imperfect, I have to take another step back in time because my participle has already happened by the time the main verb happens. So I need to translate my participle as if it is a pluperfect, had been. If my verb is present, I have to translate it as an imperfect. I have to take a step back from my present and translate it as was. If my main verb is future or future perfect, again, I take a step back. This time it only takes me to the present tense. So has been. I realize that your screen is now super complicated, so I'm gonna break it down and make it a little bit easier. If I have a present main verb, like inwenio, I have to take one step back. So I know that inwenio means find. That means that my perfect passive participle has to have already happened before I find the money. So I find the hidden money. Literally, I find the money that was hidden. I've taken a step back from my present main verb into the imperfect tense. If I have a past main verb, then I have pecuniam celatam in weni. In this case, it's a perfect main verb, doesn't matter which past tense it is. I have to take another step backwards. So I go from my perfect main verb to a pluperfect, perfect passive participle. I found the hidden money, or I found the money that had been hidden, pluperfect. If I have a future main verb, same thing again. I have pecuniam celatam in weniam. In weniam is future, so I need to take a step back, so it's present. I will find the hidden money, or I will find the money that has been hidden. Present tense, it is hidden, it's already hidden. I have to keep that passive sense in, hence the been. And that's really all there is to know about perfect passive participles. They sound quite complicated, but as long as you remember that it's the fourth principal part, and then those endings from your 212 adjectives, they actually become really easy to spot. These ones are my favorite participle because I think they're the easiest to spot and I think they're the most interesting to talk about and then the most interesting to translate. If I see a perfect passive participle, I think, oh yeah, perfect. I know exactly what's going on here. Main thing is to translate them fluently so that you try and keep that perfect passive sense. Take a step back from your main verbs, take, take a step back in time because the participle has already been completed. Remember that you need to know these noun endings really well. So if you're struggling with those, go and download my free noun endings reference guide from the link in the description below. It will really help you out and it'll just be handy to have nearby. Thank you so much for watching. I hope it's been useful. Let me know what you think in the comments and I'll see you next time on Bam Bass Bat.